This is Dr. Rosalind Artis, the first female president at Benedict College, a historically black college in Columbia. And she tells us that designation comes with great responsibility. This is a seat at the table. To the very best of our ability. <laughs> So help me God. So help me There have only been 83 black women to lead HBCUs in the history of the world. Just sort of stop right there. 83 black women have served as HBCU presidents, and four of us have done it twice. So it's really 79, right, <laughs> um, have been in this chair. Why is that? I, I think we have to unpack that as a community and sort of think through that. And I would not suggest that women are better. We're just different. The role uh, as president certainly bears its own weight, but when you lead with, when you introduce with the first female, much as a first African American or first anything, there is added pressure to get it right. Uh, the reality is if I blow this, there may not be another one for another 150 years, and the weight of that responsibility certainly is heavy. Just in talking to you, it sounds like you really do have your finger on the pulse of almost every student here. How are you able to manage that and to show your students, even through the most difficult time, that that is love. That's our way of showing you that we love you by telling you to go write this email again. Right. I think um, that's a really great question. I think um, presence matters. I have chosen to spend my career in small private institutions. I probably am not well suited to lead the Gamecocks right, because of this, my desire to be more on the ground and more directly connected to students and their success. And so I am where I'm supposed to be at this moment in terms of the environment. If they don't see me and know me and understand that I'm sincere in my desire for them to be successful, um, everything falls on deaf ears. Every student that doesn't return, I want to know why. Every student that stops out matters to me. Is it financial? Is it academic? Could we have done more? Those things keep me up at night. Role modeling is critically important, but truly teaching our students is the most important responsibility that we have. There are no passes here. Benedict is not easy and it's not supposed to be. As I referred to earlier, we talk about safe spaces and that's been popular in the vernacular lately. I guarantee you physical safety. No harm will come to you physically on the campus of Benedict College. I want your brain to hurt though. I want to stretch and push you to go beyond your comfort zone and to consider a perspective that's different than your own and to go beyond what you thought you knew and understood and be willing to listen and open your mind to something else. The brain is a muscle and it should be sore after a workout. I want you to be just intellectually exhausted when you leave here. No safe space. We're gonna push you to think at Benedict College. So I think Bathsheba had a vision for Benedict College and she used words like evidence of God's right hand planting, his intent that everyone be great, right? That everyone have an opportunity, um, powers for good in society. Benedict is producing young people who will yet go out and change the world. So I do feel the weight of the responsibility of her vision to bring that to life in a very real way. When you sit here today and think about the last several years at Benedict, what, what, what do you reflect on as, as some of the best moments. Oh my goodness, there are so many highlights. The institution has been on a transformation trajectory. We've started new programs, we opened our Women's Business Center, we have expanded our offerings, we have built out the campus physically and infrastructure. We've hired a new football coaching staff and really breathed new life and energy into our athletic programs. So many moments that we just can reflect on and be so grateful for during the last several years. What's been the most difficult thing about working through the pandemic? What we have learned during the pandemic are the human stories behind the numbers. I knew how many you know, low wealth students I had, but I didn't know how many had food and housing insecurity until COVID-19. A student posted to social media. I was forced on an airplane, sent home, and nobody asked what kind of home I was going back to. Police are investigating a shooting that left one man dead. It happened just before midnight at the Gable Oaks Apartments. In late July, I had a student killed. Uh, gun violence here in Columbia. Um, a rising senior football player um, was shot and killed. Uh, his crime, his death remains unsolved at this point, but 
At that moment, it occurred to me that if we were open under normal circumstances, he would already have been in training camp. He would not have been wherever he was on that day. He would be here at Benedict College. And so for me, that really was sort of the final um, crystallizing moment when I said, we've got to get this campus open. My kids are hungry, my kids are homeless, my kids are not connected, and my kids are not safe. I grew up in Southern West Virginia, which is a 3% minority state, and so the truth is I didn't see many people of color around me going through K-12. And so when I went to West Virginia State, then college, now university, to walk onto a campus where my teachers looked like me, my president looked like me, there was a first lady and a first family that looked like me was such a transformational experience for me. What do you say to people who have discounted HBCUs for so long? You have missed the mark. <laughs> you have missed the mark. Uh, these institutions are more important now than ever before perhaps. They were founded as a result of exclusion. Our young people did not have options to attend certain kinds of institutions and so now that those doors are ostensibly open I think people often question why we still need historically black colleges and the proof is in the pudding. We are continuing to produce at a very high rate. The goal is for each student to become their very best selves and we have a very holistic approach to that at Benedict College. What is it that Dr. Artis brings to the table that otherwise would not be there without your voice? So I think it's perspective. Um, I think the appointment that Congressman Clyburn facilitated to the National Advisory Council on higher education quality and integrity. So when we think about higher education, 4,800 colleges and universities around the country. There's only 101 of these very special institutions. So I want to bring that perspective. I want to talk about the successes of historically black colleges and the ability to really scale up and amplify their role in higher education. We can't really amplify that diversity unless all the voices are at the table and I'm, I'm honored to be that voice.